welcome back to the channel if you are new here thank you so much for clicking on this video my name is buttons i do everything home lifestyle mommy all of that type of stuff um, especially home because i recently purchased um, what is now our third home and we are doing diys and going room by room and making it over so today's video is a very special one because it kicks off our diy home theater room series you guys this is long awaited i wanted to make sure i had enough content to put out a few episodes before we caught up to where we are present day. So today's the first episode and as you saw from the previous clips we are going to tackle the demolition today. I'm also going to share with you a huge purchase that we made. Um, the first purchase for this uh, DIY project. I'm going to share with you the estimate for all of the work that we needed which is on the screen now and then I'm also going to share the inspiration for what we want the final reveal of the room to look like okay so without further ado let's get started you guys this is the estimate we called in our contractor and asked them to give us an estimate for everything that needed to be done in the room and this is what was provided to us as you can see um the theater room was going to cost us $4,850 to have them come in and do it. Now, the pros to this estimate that you see on the screen in front of you is that they could do it. They had the manpower and the experience, the tools and everything to get it done in one week's time. So you guys know Buttons was on board with that in the beginning. I really, really was, okay? Now, the con to this was that that $4,850 price tag included no materials, okay? That was for labor only. And the materials for everything that we wanted, as you can see, we needed a riser platform for the second row of chairs. We wanted six recessed lights, which now has become nine recessed lights. Um, we wanted seven sconce lights on the wall. That has now become four sconce lights on the wall. We wanted them to put up crown molding on the top of um, the ceilings and install LED lighting in them. We wanted decorative trim molding boxes around the sconce lights. We wanted them to create a small bar area, which we have um, use the closet in order to do that i'll show you that in a minute and then to install the cabinets in there to create that bar area to install shelves on the upper part of that bar area to install some sort of backsplash in there to paint the entire room the walls the ceiling the doors and the trim and also to install a television that was going to be four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars um, but that included no materials and as you know the cost of wood and lumber and all that stuff everything is inflated right now because of the pandemic and um, you have to factor in those costs before you sign a contract and you know get started on a project like this because that four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars could easily double once you add the materials to it so ronnie and i sat down and talked about it and i was team pay the money let's enjoy this theater in a week <laughs> and he was like whoa 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 this includes no materials let's calculate or estimate the amount of materials that we would need for this project so that we can come up with what the total number would be once we did that both of us were like wow um, we weren't prepared to spend that amount for um, this project at all and we really didn't see the need to um, he was definitely more convincing that hey I think we can DIY this entire thing minus the electrical we are going to hire a professional electrician and minus the carpet installation we are going to hire a professional to come in and install that but he said minus those things I really do think that we can do the majority of all of the other work ourselves. So that is exactly what we have been doing and that is the process that I'm gonna take you along on. I will say that YouTube has been our friend. It has been very inspiring, informative, educational, all of those things. And we had an agreement in the beginning that if things were not going according to plan and they didn't look aesthetically pleasing, which is my big thing. I like things to, I love to DIY things. I like to learn how to do things, but you guys, it has to look a certain way in the end. If it doesn't have that factory finish ending, then it's not good in my opinion. And so we had an agreement in the beginning that if things were not looking good or we didn't know what we were doing, it wasn't coming out good, then we would hire the professionals to come in and go ahead and redo it. Now, I thought about getting multiple estimates for this, 
But once he convinced me that we could try to DIY it, I was convinced that this was going to be a huge flop and that we were going to have to get a professional in here anyway. And so I was prepared to just save this estimate and call these contractors back in a few weeks. But guys, that has not been happening. And just, you know, a, a look into the future, um, some future episodes to come. This project is actually going very smoothly and really well. Now, I will say the thing I was worried about is that we are not able, obviously, to complete this in one week's time, but that's okay. At the end of this project, we will have paid cash for everything, no debt, and we learned a ton on how to do it ourselves. You, we are learning so much. The, the experience is invaluable you guys and it's also been very fun so I'm gonna stop rambling here this is the estimate that we got and I'm going to move into what our inspiration is for the final reveal of the room okay guys so switching gears to the inspiration for the room you guys this was actually taken from the contractors website that we were considering having do all of the work this was exactly what we had in mind as you know, on both levels of um, upper levels of the home, we do have that light gray, the classic silver gray by Bear Paints. And so we thought this color palette would be perfect to kind of merge into the already existing color palette that we have in the house. Obviously, we wanted to add in some darker tones because this is a cinema or, you know, an in-home theater. But we wanted the base color to remain the lighter gray color, which matches the rest of the house. OK, so we love the fact that we could bring in the darker tones by painting the doors and trim the dark gray color and then adding all of the wood trim being the baseboards the crown molding and also the decorative trim molding boxes on the walls in that black color we fell in love with the carpet but we may not get the same carpet we haven't picked the carpet yet but we just thought that this really tied the space together and another view of the same space um, you can see that the ceiling is the darker gray that's also on the walls and you guys just to give you a heads up we've already painted the space and it has definitely definitely come together now we do have a closet in the room and we decided to change the closet to a snack bar and so this is kind of what I envisioned I went to Pinterest and found some options um, but basically I want to do base cabinets on the lower half and I want to put like a wine um, not a wine fridge but I want to put a beverage fridge in the um, in between the two uh, cabinets and then at the top I want to go ahead and put um, I wanted to mount a microwave and put some cabinets but because there's duct work uh, above the closet in our uh, theater room the ceiling in the closet is a little dropped so we're not going to probably be able to put cabinets 30 inch cabinets are a little bit too long for the space so I may have to do the open shelving that you saw in the first inspiration picture but I'm okay with that we are going to work around it and we're going to figure it out together through the process okay so now we're going to move into what the current room looks like Okay guys, so here is the before of the room. We've already cleared out the entire room, except for the closet area. I'll show you guys that in a second. But this is the space of the room. It's about mm, 16 by 16, but because of my studio door, it's really about, on this side, it's about 13 by 16. So that's why we decided to have the orientation of the room face this way. So we kind of marked off the width and everything of the TV. It's not exactly where the TV will go on the wall, but we just wanted to see how big the screen would be on the wall. Um, so yeah, the chairs will be a row here and then a platform with another row in the back. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys the before of the room. We'll be doing recessed lights um, in the ceiling and getting rid of this boob light. Um, we'll also be doing crown molding. We'll be doing some trim molding on the walls. These two walls are the largest walls in the room. Um, and then over here is where we're gonna turn the closet into the concession slash snack bar area. So obviously I didn't realize this, but the ceilings in the closet don't go as tall as the ceilings in the room. So I can't do like 30 
30 inch length cabinets on the top because it wouldn't leave really any space in between the um, base cabinets and the bottom of the wall cabinet so i'm gonna have to do shorter wall cabinets on the top which is fine it'll look really good um but yeah i'm gonna the plan is to do a 15 inch cabinet a 24 inch beverage fridge and then another 15 inch cabinet for 54 inches across and then at the top we want to mount um, a stainless steel microwave in the center which is 30 inches across so then that leaves um 24 and 24 so we would have to do a 12 inch cabinet and a 12 inch cabinet but we have to do the shorter one so that we'll we'll have enough space like on the countertop as well so that's the plan um and we will be probably removing the um door jam out and just having it you know just a regular the wall um end of the wall um and then right here beside that is where we're thinking about putting the popcorn machine there's already an outlet right there so i think that'll be good we'll put like some popcorn decor or something assign or something over that and then i do want to do like the the curtains on both sides of the screen so hopefully that'll be good we're going to do like i said some um trim molding on the walls and um yeah i think it'll be really really nice but this is the before of the room so i just wanted to give you a span of the entire room this is the entrance door this door leads to the hall bathroom there's an entrance in this room and in there um we thought about closing off this door but it's fine i mean it's nice to have an entrance right here as well and then this is my studio door as well so this is what we'll have now i know that we are going to have to have this vent moved over because we want to do crown molding um and so yeah we'll have to get some help in there with that um along with the hvac i'm not the hvac the um recessed lighting as well and then of course the carpet because we're going to take up this carpet which is brand new carpet we're going to take it up and do a darker carpet in here but we also have to take it up because we're doing the riser which needs to be carpeted as well and we don't have any more of this carpet so um that is the plan this is the before you guys hey guys we're headed into costco to pick up what is going to be the start of our next home diy project can you guys guess what it is <laughs> we saw it earlier we were in here shopping for groceries earlier and saw it and it's just too good of a deal to just leave here so we're gonna grab it okay guys can you guess where we're going? Uh, somebody bought one. <laughs> we're going right here, guys. We are going to start on the theater room. And we are interested in this 86 inch LG um, LED 4K TV. And it's on sale for $1,400. It comes with um, $100 streaming credit towards either Google Play, Paramount Plus, Showtime. Sling TV or Xbox and then it also comes with um, a five-year warranty so we're gonna grab it Ronnie went to my parents house to grab his um, van and this is the TV we're gonna go with very clear we really like it okay guys it's literally five minutes later we made it home so we're about to take out this um, TV and this is another reason why we won't get rid of this van because it's great for hauling big items like this so we usually park it just in front of the house but we're about to bring it in the house and put it in the foyer until somebody can help him come move it because it is kind of heavy. Okay, guys. So, welcome to the channel, you guys. We're about to get started. So, the first step in this process is to remove all of the carpeting. This is brand new carpet. I'm not sure if we're going to save it for right now or what we're going to do, but we are going to remove it and the padding underneath along with the tack strips. And then we're going to also remove the baseboards. Okay. So we're going to get started with phase one. Okay, guys, what you see me doing now is taking this utility knife or this sharp edge razor blade, um, whatever you want to call it, and cutting the caulk line above the baseboards. You guys, doing this allows for the baseboards to be pried away from the drywall a lot cleaner and a lot smoother um, and so that's what I'm doing and then next I'm going to be taking a crowbar and just gently prying the uh, baseboards away from the drywall and as you can see it comes off pretty good pretty smooth this was a quick process um, it was two of us doing it so we were able to get the baseboards out of this space um, in no time again the room is not that large but there was baseboards all around it 
Um, next, you see me here in the closet, which we're going to change again to the snack bar area. So we are going to take out um, this wire shelving. We no longer need it. And we have to pry off all of the um, closet shelving hardware. You guys, I thought this stuff was screwed in and I could use my power drill, but no, it was actually nailed in and getting it out was like really, really hard. Like some of them I couldn't even get and you'll see that I had to have Ronnie Strength come in and save me. And you also see me using that same technique to cut the caulk line around the door trim because we are going to remove the door jam. There were closet doors here and obviously we don't need them for the snack bar area. So we are going to take out this entire door jam. And so we're using the same technique just um, using a utility knife and scoring the old caulk and then coming behind it with a crowbar and prying off the um, the trim gently Okay, you guys, and now that the process of removing all of the baseboards and the closet door trim and door jam has already been done, here's a quick look at what the space looks like. Um, everything has been removed. We also removed the outlet covers as well to prepare for painting. And now we're going to move into step two, which is removing the carpet. And what you can see now is Ronnie has scored the carpet with that same utility knife right at where the door um, entryway to this room starts because we are leaving the carpet in the rest of the basement for now. We are only DIYing and working on this specific room in the basement so we didn't want to remove the carpet in the entire basement so he scored the carpet right at the doorway and now he's using his man strength to pull the carpet away from the tack strips all along the perimeter of the room and and then we are going to go ahead and start rolling it up um, so that we can get it out of the space. And I always be around when I need some love and baby. And I never let you down. Let you down, let you down. I'm your song. Can you sing all my melodies? There's no one else. Cause baby, we got chemistry. You give me feelings that feelings that I carpet roll was removed you guys we started to pull the um, carpet padding away from the tack strips along the perimeter of the room and then after we started doing this process I'm just gonna let you know that we realized hey we're gonna actually replace the carpet in here with more theater room style appropriate carpet so let's try to leave the carpet padding down and maybe we can save some money now we're not sure if this is going to actually work out they may require us to buy new carpet padding but like I said this is trial and error so we decided to put it back down down um, for most of the room now we are going to be building a riser that's going to be episode two so stay tuned for that we're going to show you exactly what we did to do that and so we did remove the padding from where the riser is going to be but we kept it in the rest of the room
Okay guys, and so now that all the demo in the room was pretty much done, there was nothing else we needed to take out of the room or remove before we actually started the process of planning the room out and putting things into action. So here you see us taking a tape measure and measuring for the decorative wall trim boxes that are going to go um, all around the room on two of the walls. And so these are also going to be around the wall sconce lights. So we really wanted to figure out how many boxes we wanted on each wall, what the width of the boxes were gonna be, what the width in between each of the boxes was gonna be, what the height of the boxes was gonna be, um, especially given the fact that there was going to be um, a large riser um, on this back wall and so we needed to know where the bottom of the trim boxes were going to stop and where the top of the trim boxes were going to start and and so here that's where you see us you know mapping it out measuring it out writing it out um, and then we're going to use painters tape to kind of draw it on the wall to give us a visual Ronnie is more visual than I am but the visuals do definitely help me as well and so this is the process of us doing that. And as you can see, to plan out where the bottom of the decorative wall trim boxes were going to end um, above the baseboards, we went ahead and pulled out our laser level and um, it shoots a straight line across the entire wall for us so that I can then go ahead and put the um, painter's tape on that straight line to create the visual box for us. I will say that doing a DIY of this magnitude is very important for you to have the proper tools to make your life easier. And if you don't have them or if you don't already own them or you don't know someone that owns them that is gonna let you borrow them, then look into Tool Rental. I know the Home Depot and I think maybe Lowe's does rent tools as well try your local hardware store um, but having the proper tools definitely is a headache saver and a time saver in a project of this magnitude okay you guys hi <laughs> so let's recap everything that we did today because you can kind of hear an echo but it's because we took out the carpet and um, so the room is kind of bare okay so let me um, turn the camera around and recap everything that we did today and then I'll let you know what we plan to do in episode two okay okay so the first thing we did was we took off all of the baseboards around the entire room even in the closet again again the closet is going to be the concession slash snack bar zone area um and so i have plans for this i'll try to sketch it out for you guys in an upcoming episode but basically i want to put um base cabinets um here and then um, a beverage fridge in the center, a countertop across. I wanted to mount a microwave in the center and then two um, wall cabinets on either side of that. I'm gonna have to measure that because I didn't realize that the ceiling of the closet is about a foot um, lower than the ceiling in the room. And so with a regular 30 inch cabinet, it's gonna come down pretty far. So I don't know, I'll have to measure that and we'll have to see if that can be done. But we took all the baseboards up. We also took um, all the door trim and the existing door um, frame out because again, this was a closet. We took out the wire shelving that was in here. So we'll have to, um, you know, fix the walls and everything. Um, Ronnie went ahead off camera and took off all of the outlet covers. That's super simple. We were about to take up the carpet padding, but then we thought about it and we were like, this padding is brand new. We've never even used this room. And when we bought the house, the basement was brand new carpet anyway. And so we were like, hey, we're gonna have this room recarpeted it recarpeted <laughs> recarpeted um just different you know darker carpet that's more suitable for a theater room and so um hopefully we're saving some money by already having the padding down and they would just have to add it to the floor riser for the back row of the seats okay so that's where we stopped um let me tell you what episode oh and then we we decided that we only wanted two trim boxes on this back wall so we think what we're going to do is have a 10 inch riser i think between eight and ten inches okay and then um we also have six inch baseboards left over from our kitchen or 
main level renovations. So we're saving money because we don't have to buy anymore. So we have six inch baseboards. So if we do the 10 inch um, riser and then six inches on top of that would be the baseboard that goes across um, the top of the riser, that's a total of 16 inches. So we mark that off um, and then we brought the bottom of the Wayne's coating boxes a foot above um, where the baseboards would end, which is right there. Um, again, we may do eight inches for the riser, but either way, it's gonna be an additional six inches um, on top of the riser for the baseboards. And then we're gonna stop the Wayne's coating boxes about a foot above that. So for right now, this is definitely not perfect. This taping is definitely not perfect, but we did wanna tape off to see if we liked the size of the Wayne's coating boxes versus doing three. The reason why we like only two on this back wall is because the design we have, or I have in my head, has the outer boxes just like you see them with the blue tape but then there's also an inner box as well maybe four to five inches um inside each box and so when we put three boxes on the wall and then we tried to do the inner box it was they were just way too skinny and the plan is hopefully to put in the um sconce lights inside of the wayne's coating boxes now so we we think we want to do two on this back wall these will obviously be shorter because again um the uh riser will be back on that back wall as well and as, as far as um probably the middle of this wall as well so when when you think about it like over here there'll be a six inch baseboard but there's no riser so everything will be you know either eight or ten inches lower on this side than it will be on here because we'll have that eight inch or ten inch riser so we have to keep that in mind on this wall we do expect the wayne's coating boxes to come down further um but on this wall they couldn't because we need the riser okay and the bottoms of this is going to be covered by the chair backs anyway um, but we still wanted it to be cohesive so we're going to do two boxes on this wall the plan is to mark off three boxes on this wall let me stand back so you guys can see so this wall has a what we call a bulkhead there's hvac um under that so we can't like take it out so i was planning to do two boxes here and then one shorter one there um so we're gonna map all that out but we decided that getting the framing or at least building getting started on building the riser would be smart to do and like kind of put that in place and then we can you know work on where we want the boxes on the walls and how far they can come down based on how far the riser comes out so this is where we're ending today and in the next episode we will be focusing on the riser so stay tuned for that um we had to look up the chairs that he really wants to order the ones that we're going to go with so that we could get the um met the dimensions and the measurements when the chairs are fully reclined how much space you need in between each row how much space you need between the back of the chair and the back wall all of that stuff had to be taken into consideration so we have all of those dimensions now and so now it's time for us to kind of um, frame out and build the riser and so we've been looking at a ton of youtube videos so that's going to be in the next episode but thank you guys so much for tuning in there's so much to be done we are going to be hiring some help through some contractors we need um recess lighting in here and to close off this light we also need two recess lights in the concession stand we need a few more outlets placed behind where the tv will go um one down here for the beverage fridge one up there hopefully for the um over the range microwave um and then we're not sure what type of speakers he's going to do we, we plan to do crown molding as well um and I'm not sure if this vent has to move or not. It may not. There, it may be, you know, enough space for us to put crown molding and it won't cover up, you know, or overlap that vent. But we'll see. But we are going to have to have a professional come in and do some of those things as well as install the carpet. Um, I got some carpet samples and everything. So I'll go over that in a future video um, with you guys. But this is how far we got today. I'm really pleased with the amount of... Um, 
work that we got done. This was not easy work, you guys, and I did it with my full set, <laughs> as you can see. But we are saving a ton, a ton of money. Um, I'm expected to get a quote from um, a, the contractor that did our kitchen. Hopefully that quote will be coming in today or that estimate will be coming in today. Um, and we'll go from there. Like I said, we are gonna have a professional do some of the things, but for a lot of this, we can do it ourselves. The wainscoting, the painting, um, building the riser, stuff like that. Um, the cabinets, all of that stuff. So um, I've already priced out cabinets and everything. And so, yeah, this episode one is, you know, in the books. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Again, you guys, we are not rushing this project because we are doing a lot of the work ourselves. We wanna make sure that it's done right. And a lot of times we have to learn right before we do it because we've never done this before. So it's not gonna be one of those series that's like over in, you know, three or four weeks probably. It may take a little bit of time, but again, I will take you through the entire process. So I will see you guys in the next, um, home theater room DIY makeover series video. Bye.